Hey guys, it's Jacob with The Wild Calling, and today I'm bringing you a video that has to do with our prep series. This is our season prep, and particularly gear prep. This is going to be going through a strategy with cameras that I use to help conceal my cameras a little bit further. It's going to be camoing them up. I'm also going to be making locks for these cameras, so I can show you guys how to make really, really cheap locks, so you're not spending a whole bunch on Python cables or anything like that. So stick around, and you'll learn a thing or two about keeping your camera safe on public land. Got my three-legged dog out here helping me prep a few of my true cameras. And right now I'm going to move on to the step where I prep the locks here. So what I'm going to do is just spray paint these locks on all sides except for the bottom for now. And uh, get them ready for the field. And I'm just doing a drab camouflage, non-shiny coat, non-reflective finish spray paint. You can do this in black or brown, whatever you feel. I wouldn't do it in green because it's not really going to last to the late season. That's not going to be really realistic in the late season. It'll stick out like a sore thumb. Next thing I'm doing here is I'm taping over all the lenses here, taping over this sensor, taping over the flash area, I'm taping over this lens right here with clear tape, really tight. I'm putting a coat on right here. Not doing it too neat because I'm in a little bit of a rush. But as you can see right here, I made a little template. It's supposed to run like oak bark. And I'm just laying that template in areas like this. Not doing the back of the camera because I don't need to. I'm laying that thing tight. Kind of just sacrificing my fingers a little bit. I'm giving it a light high spray. Trying a plastic layout, just seeing if it'll fit a little bit tighter. Just give it a coat. And your fingers. Are so you can see the difference here between cameras that have that second coat and don't. It's got a little bit more complex of blending. I'm gonna put a third coat on too. But I'm just going over, I'm making sure I'm not laying that pattern in the exact same place. So I have a layering of color. So I put this pattern down. Right about here is where I placed it before. I can tell by where the gaps are. I'm gonna kind of lay it a little bit sideways to that. And that gives it a different layering effect. Ones that I put the third coat on, ones I haven't. The goal of this coat is to keep it pretty light, it's just to give it a little bit more. I'm using kind of my thicker patterns here, so I'm leaving a lot of the background. And I'm just kind of tapping this top here, giving it just another little bit of a dimension. Trying to get a little dark out, but right here is the finished product. See those cameras blend in pretty dang well and that tape perfectly kept all of my important areas here clear. Another strategy I'm gonna be trying here is using a hot glue gun so I can layer the camo in differently. So what I'm gonna do is take some hot glue, start on the top side, and you wanna make sure you're not actually gluing your uh, door shut or over your lens or anything. What I do is Create thick beads that will allow you to pull them off and just kind of put on a bark pattern. That stuff's just about dry here. I'm going to take my spray paint. I've got all my stuff taped up so I don't have to worry about it. Do it in the camera or anything. The next thing I'm going to do here is this spray paint being dry. I'm going to come back and fill in some of these gaps just a little bit, just a few of them, and kind of alternate which gaps I'm filling and not fill them all the way, but get them pretty close. Let that sit there and dry. Then I'll hit it with another coat of spray paint. All right, next, I'm gonna take my darker camo. This color's in a little bit of a minority, so right now what I'm doing I'm having the 
majority of the camera colored right now with this black and tan. And I'm using that, I'm, I'm using the hot glue to kind of cement that that color is gonna stay on. So I'm covering the majority of the surface with the hot glue, protecting those colors. And I'm gonna use this spray paint here to add a little bit of this on. So I'm getting a little bit darker color here. I'm not looking to completely coat it. Just give it a little bit of a touch. And we'll let that spray paint dry. If you want to clear your hands of spray paint, like I just did, rub a little bit of vegetable oil on, really mix that around in your hands. Um, and just keep rubbing, keep rubbing, it'll eventually start to come off, then take kind of a semi-abrasive sponge, like a somewhat light sponge, but something that'll really dig at this stuff, and rub really, really good on your hands, and that stuff should all pretty much come off. And wash it away with soap and water, and you're good to go. So now I'm gonna take off this hot glue. Show you guys what the camera looks like. So this right here is what the end product looks like. I'm gonna hang it on a tree using that wire method and show you guys what it looks like when it's on a tree. As you guys can see here, this camera is pretty well blended in. The only thing that's really giving it away is this big old LED screen that these cameras have on here, but a little bit cheaper of a model. It's one that I like to put out in mass. It's actually one that my buddy Gary Grinnell turned me on to. Um, but this is a soda camera is really, really well blended in. It's got different tones that match the different tones of the art. And it's got that same vertical oriented pattern. Really what gives cameras away is kind of that pattern recognition that hunters can see right away. And that camera is not natural. It's uh, breaking the pattern of that bark in the tree. So a good thing that we got going here is that vertical pattern, like I said, and actually some of this glue here, this little bit of residue that I wasn't quite able to get off or just left on, it's actually giving it a little bit more 3D effect. It's less flat and drab, it's more realistic, the actual texture and bark of the tree. So give this a try. We're gonna go ahead and make a lock for it. And show you guys how we do that. So first thing I'm gonna do is measure out my cable. I'm kinda looking for about a six foot span. So that's about my wingspan plus a couple inches. And I'm gonna crimp off about another eight inches to make sure that I have enough room for the cables to loop back over and you guys will see why in a sec here. So I cut off my wire at six feet and what I'm gonna do is actually take one of these little kits, you can get at Menards. You can make a lock out of just one of these. And I'm gonna feed my wire through there, double it back. Now you may need to shave down the ends of this wire here just to make sure that it actually fits into here. I'm gonna double it back. I'd recommend getting a grommet size a little bit larger than you'd expect you need. I'm going to feed it through. So I got this here. And the next thing I'm going to do is take a hammer, put this on something hard like concrete, and get that completely crimped on there. So that works just fine. Nice and crimped. It's not going to come loose, not going to come out. You got yourself one side. I'm going to take duct tape. I'm going to coat this whole wire in duct tape as tightly as possible. So I'm going to leave a bit of a gap on this side. As you can see, I got this whole thing coated tightly in duct tape. Got it stuck down well. Electrical tape again works really well, but I like a little bit of camo. Take another one of these. Feed my wire through. Just like I did before. Actually, you know what? And I'm going to take my camera, leave some of that area uncovered here, and I'm going to feed this through my camera. So, top side of my camera is up here. I'm going to feed it through the top side. I'll let my camera go along into the duct tape section. And yes, this works great with cameras that have doors as well. I actually recommend it more for those that you can lock the doors down. So I'm going to take this. Feed my grommet into it. Push that wire as tight as I can to make as small of a loop as possible. Right there, hammer it down. I 
And now I got this lock permanently attached to my camera. And this works great. It's, I've never had an issue with it, even with ones that have doors, I don't have issues with them at all. Um, not being able to open the doors or anything like that. I purposely use a really, really long area. Um, and I can wrap it multiple times around the tree and get it tight. Most of the time I can get it so tight that you can't even open the door. Um, if not, what you can do is you can actually wrap these around a few times, take a tight lock, and get a few extra inches by locking right here, locking around it, because those things can't slip out still. They can't pull apart if that lock is too small to do so. So I would recommend doing that if you need to get a couple extra inches out of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish duct taping these up, you got yourself a super cheap lock ready to go.